Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we're talking about how ATP is used. In the previous video, which I will link right here, we discussed what ATP was, and we know that it's a molecule that acts as the energy currency for our cells, which remember, the cells are the functional units of our body. So if we do something, it's because our cells are doing something, right? So how do they do these things? Well, they use ATP, and specifically, they will cleave the last phosphate off of the ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate, three phosphates, and when it cleaves that phosphate, that phosphate will go flying. It will have a lot of kinetic energy, which is movement energy, right? So I'm going to take ATP, and I'm going to use it in three different cells of our bodies. First, the skeletal muscles, the ones that move our skeleton. Second, the neurons, which are in our brains and spinal cords, which conduct signals and make us think and feel and all that stuff. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about a pancreas cell that is going to be secreting a hormone called insulin. And all three processes need ATP. So let's get started. First off, any skeletal muscle of our body is considered striated. And what striated actually means is that it's striped. So you see the muscle cells themselves, they're very striped, 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 right? And the goal of the muscle cells, think about it, is to contract them to shorten them right if we shorten them we can move our bones just like if you're moving back and forth you're shortening all sorts of muscle cells so you can move so we need to take all these lines and accordion them together so we got to bring all the lines together that's how you contract a muscle. So how does that actually happen? Well, let me show you. If I were to zoom in on just two of those stripes, this is what I would see. Okay, so what the heck are we looking at here? Well, I zoomed in on the lines, remember, of the skeletal muscle cells, and I'm looking at these lines here. Those are the ones that correspond here. And inside, in between those lines, we've got two big proteins, which remember, proteins are made by your cells to do a whole slew of things. And we've got two main proteins here. We've got a big, thick myosin protein, literally means the muscle protein, and then we have actin, which is going to be acted upon, nicely named. Now, with the myosin, you see how they have these little like boxing glove looking things? Well, remember, we want to move these black lines together so the muscle can contract. So what do you think needs to happen here in order to pull those guys together? Well, we need the myosin heads to basically grab onto the actin and pull it towards the center line. Now, how do we do that? Well, friendly ATP is going to come in here and what it will do is when we break off that phosphate, so I'm going to show this happening. So when ATP is cleaved, we've got that free phosphate. And remember, it goes flying, right? It makes something move. So what does it do? Well, interestingly, it will move the myosin head backwards just like this. So think about this like a catapult, right? The phosphate group pushed that myosin head back, and now that myosin head has all this stored energy, right? Just like a catapult. And when that catapult is let go, boom, it goes the opposite direction, right? So ATP will do that to all of these myosin heads. And by doing so, we're basically making, we're preparing catapults of all these myosin heads so that when they interact with that actin, they can then pull the actin that direction just like this. So when this happens to literally every single striation in here, what we get is this. All the lines come together and the muscle shortens, contracts, and you begin moving. Now, a fun side point, when you actually use ATP in your muscle cells, not only are you released that phosphate for the actual contraction, but you also release a little bit of heat as a byproduct. And that is why you get warm when you exercise. You're producing a lot of heat by cleaving the ATP. Awesome. Now let's move into our next cell type, which will be called a neuron. Now a neuron is just a fancy name to say brain or spinal cord cell, but we're going to stick with brain cell in this case. So this is a brain cell, and the way brain cells work is they have to send signals to one another, right? So this neuron might communicate with another neuron, which might communicate to another neuron, and so forth and so on, and that is thought and feeling and all the things that you do with your mind. Now, how do we actually get this guy to work? Well, we have a very important pump, and this is called the sodium potassium pump. Now, some background on this. This is just another protein. Just like these were proteins in the cell, this is a protein made by the neuron cell, smashed it into the membrane of the cell, and it is a pump. So, in a pump, you need to use ATP energy to fire it. So we release the phosphate, the phosphate flies. Now, what is it going to move in this case? Well, in this case, we're actually going to pump sodium ions, which sodium is just an electrolyte. You probably heard of that, like table salt has sodium in it and that type of thing. 
we're going to pump that out of the cell. And we're actually going to exchange it with potassium, which is in bananas and electrolyte drinks and all that sort of thing. So these are important ions, charged atoms, that you need in your body. Now, when we use this pump, we are accumulating a lot of sodium outside of that neuron, and that is key. Because when the neuron wants to actually send its signal, the way it does that is it has to open what's called sodium gates. Once again, another protein the cell made. And that gate, when it wants to send a signal, will open up, and you can guess it. If we open up a gate for sodium, and there's a lot out here, where does sodium probably want to go? In nature, things like to flow from high concentration to relatively low concentration. So sodium will flow from outside of the cell into the cell. And by doing that, this cell will get super duper positively charged, send the signal, and we have successfully sent the neuron chemical signal. Now, if you want to learn more about that, I guarantee that you would enjoy watching this video on action potentials, which is the way the neurons actually send their signals. Great, now the last one. This is going to be in terms of a cascade of events because this happens in a variety of different cells. Now I'm gonna focus primarily on the beta cells of the pancreas. Pancreas is a wonderful little organ tucked right underneath your stomach about right here, and it is going to secrete hormones. Now a hormone is just a chemical messenger that's going to jump into the bloodstream and go do a variety of things. And the hormone that the beta cells produce is called insulin. You may have heard of insulin in terms of diabetics, and insulin, what it will do is it will help to lower blood sugar. So let's just say you ate a really, really sugary, sugary snack, and now in your bloodstream, which is shown right here, you're just accumulating a lot, a lot, a lot of sugar. So this is going to be sugar, otherwise known as glucose, but we'll say sugar for now. Too much sugar in the blood can actually cause a variety of bad things to happen, like comas and that type of thing. So what we need to do is we need to release insulin into the bloodstream to help get that sugar out of the blood. Well, here's the thing. These beta cells will have this insulin inside of them. So when your blood sugar spikes, these cells want to take that insulin from this big little capsule called a vesicle and push it uh, to the outside of the cell, thus releasing it into the bloodstream. So that's the goal. We got to get the insulin out into the bloodstream. How do we do it? You guessed it, ATP. So what ATP will do, it will be used to activate what's called a protein kinase A. So we see here this protein kinase, once again, just a protein made from the cell, is getting shoved by that phosphate when we cleaved ATP. And we know when we release the phosphate, stuff moves, stuff happens, right? And in this case, this protein kinase A, when the phosphate attaches to it, it will go through a variety of different steps. And I'm not going to show them here, but it goes through a variety of different steps called a cascade. And it is going to end up making molecules appear that will actually push on those vesicles. And when those vesicles get pushed, they're gonna go out of the membrane, thus releasing that insulin into the bloodstream. By releasing insulin in the bloodstream, we can now lower those blood sugar levels to a normal level once again, and we have achieved what's called homeostasis, which is the balance of your body. So this is how ATP is actually used in a variety of ways in muscle contractions in your brain, as well as in the beta cells of the pancreas. So ATP is such an important molecule, right? Well, how do we make it in our cells then? That's coming up in the next video.